right, good afternoon, Raven County. This is Roger Glenn with POS Realty, but you already knew that. That's the least important amount of information you're gonna get, or the least important information you're gonna get today. Um, anyway, I am really happy to be uh, in Persimmon today at Ladybug Farms. Uh, Laura and I live out in Persimmon, and so here we're here with Terry, you're gonna help me out with this, Jagger Blinko. I got that right. That's the hardest part um, of Ladybug Farms, obviously. And you're the owner operator. Correct. Yeah. And so um, we live over on Nichols Branch Lane. That's right. So and it's like a mile and a half away. And as the crow flies, maybe half a mile. Yeah, not that far at all. So um, I usually start with asking where you're located. And since you're a little off the beaten path, will you explain to folks where the farm is? Okay, so I'm out in Persimmon, um, Coleman River Road. So that's... Yeah. And does GPS direct people here pretty well? Close enough. Close enough. Close enough. Yeah. yeah. So if you come out Persimmon Road until you get to Coleman River Road, just about the time the pavement ends, yep. you start looking for Ladybug Farm on the exactly. right. So, yeah. um, well, Terry, tell us a little bit about your story in terms of how you came to, to be here and have the farm. Okay, so um, it was in 2000, and, well, actually 2007, I came up here for a season and I just, it sounds crazy, but I just really wanted to grow spinach, and I don't even know where that came from, but that's what I wanted to do. Uh-huh. And Bye, so Popeye. I, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> but so I came up to the mountains, because I had fallen in love with the mountains. I'd been up here several years before studying uh, medicinal herbs with Patricia Caritzi Howe, and I'm fell in love with the mountains, and so came up here for a season, found some land in Tiger that they allowed me to do an eighth of an acre of garden, organic garden, Yep. and rented a place in Wolfie Valley and to just try it out. And so we got two farmers markets a week, one at the Clayton Market up here at the time you were on Main Street in front of Mr. Butler's, uh -huh. and then also did a market down in Atlanta. Um, so I drove down once a week to the big city. Um, and decided that I liked it enough to the next, to that winter come looking for land. And so I ended up, I was looking for three acres and I ended up with 14 and um, <laughs> so I couldn't find a small parcel of bottom land. And very grateful that um, I do have the space in yeah. the National Forest next to me and the big open 11 acres of pasture. So it's a, uh, on a small, relatively small footprint, a very diverse piece of land with woods and pasture adjacent to National Forest and then the creeks. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a beautiful area. And so, um, tell us about Ladybug Farms, and if you could start with maybe the obvious question is, how'd you come up with the name Ladybug Farms? Um, well, so I've always loved ladybugs, and um, my I had a garden design business before farming, and that was Gardens by Ladybug, but that originally came from, I just always loved ladybugs. They're nothing flashy, they do good work, and they always make you smile. <laughs> so that's just the ladybug thing and so it only made sense when I got a farm that I'm the ladybug and now I farm therefore ladybug farms yeah so yeah. that was the uh, idea behind that and um, yes we do have ladybugs here and yes they get in my cabin in the spring like everybody else is and, <laughs> and maybe become annoying for a moment but um, you know they also do good work and they do make a smile and they are good. Yeah. So that's the origin behind the name, um, and so I um, I grow 40 different crops, um, pretty much everything but corn, um, and I save a lot of my own seeds, I start a lot of my own tomato plants, I do a lot of heirloom tomato plants, I do plenty of varieties of them, yep. um, sweet potato slips, Today I was uh, potting up uh, the strawberry plants for next season. Ooh. So getting those um, from the mother plants, you send out the babies, you do the pups, then you cut them off. You know, it's, you know, yeah. it's a process. Um, yes. I plant by the moon, so I'm very tied to that. It's basically the farmer's almanac. A lot of locals do that here. What I like about that is every 28 days there's a rhythm that starts over again and I know I just need to plug into that rhythm of what's happening and 
Yeah. It's way bigger than me. So. Yeah. You were saying too, um, you know, it's a lot about not just the seasons, but the weather on any given day. Sure. So the only good news about us doing this in the rain mm -hmm. is that we're not necessarily taking you away from work. Right? Oh, this is true. <laughs> no, trust me, I have my sunny day list and my rainy day yeah. list and my sunny day hour and my rainy day hour. Yes. So, Sp yeah. Bringing the productivity I gave up, on I gave any up day. looking at the weather reports a long time ago because I realized I was not getting so many things done because of the possibility that it might rain. Yes. And so now I just kind of like... Which that's it. That's actually a great um, lesson in, in getting around and talking to a lot of different people. Um, I certainly understand the importance of people trying to predict the weather um, and what meteorologists do. But at the same time, you know, if, if you take it as gospel, you may miss an opportunity to do something really cool. We were just up with Pam Thompson at the stables and sometimes when they say well it's going to rain today nobody comes out and tries to, to do sure. things and so the sure. weather is worth to your point watching yes and having a plan to take advantage of right making some hay while the sun is shining yes yeah hay is something you do not want the rain for but just about anything else but i also um you know i'm not a sugar cube it's not a good idea to be a farmer if you're a sugar cube but the reality is you know yeah, so you get a little wet. Oh well, you know yeah. you can dry off. And there are certain things in the fields that I don't want to be doing in the rain. Like yesterday, I really wanted to be trellising the beans, the full beans. It was time they're sending out their runners, and it's time for them to be trellis. But we've had the sprinkles every afternoon, yeah. and I don't want to be in with certain plants because that's when you can transfer a lot of disease with the tomatoes and the beans. Yeah. So I couldn't do that. But there's plenty of other things yeah. that we can do. Um, your produce, how do you generally then uh, distribute that? Um, I have done a CSA for many years, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, mm -hmm. which is a box of produce with a weekly delivery. That, I believe, is the best model for a small farm to make a living because you can count. You take the market risk out of the equation. You know that if, once you get those customers, you grow it. If you grow it, once you grow it, it's sold. Yeah. Um, but it's also a lot of responsibility. You've got to juggle a lot of different crops at a lot of different times, and so it's 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 not for beginner farmers. Yeah. I'm taking a break a little bit from that this year. I am selling the Clayton Farmers Market on Saturdays. Okay. And if you talk about nobody wants to come to the farmers market on a rainy day, but if you want to get out and support a farmer, you go to the farmers market on a rainy day. Okay, you hear that? So it's because Clayton Farmers Market Clayton Farmers every Saturday. Bank, in front of the food bank every Saturday. Yep. Nine to twelve thirty. Yep. Um, and that goes all the way until, up until November. November, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. And, um, but yeah, because the food keeps growing, it needs to be harvested twice a week, and you know we are not like Walmart with big coolers and big you know storage facilities. It's, it gets harvested that morning or the day before. It goes yeah. into coolers and it goes to market. Yep. So, so, so about as fresh as you can get. Exactly. And, if, you know, one of the many lessons or gifts from COVID in this last year is how important eating fresh, local, healthy, nutritious food is. Yeah. So yeah. this is an opportunity to, you know, act on that. Um, yeah. A couple of things that folks may not realize, but um, can you talk just a little bit about farm camp? Okay, that is um, really, I really enjoy teaching and educating. Um, it shows. And, oh, thanks. Well, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just, I do, I enjoy it. Um, and so the idea behind Adult and Family Farm Camp is um, to give folks really just kind of a taste of what happens on a farm. Everybody has all of these ideas, um, but this is an opportunity to uh, try it out before you go out and buy five acres of a mule and decide this is the worst decision I've ever made in my entire do you, life. Do you have to get or, the mule five acres? Or no, can you no, just no, 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 no. Okay. No, yeah, but, <laughs> but um, you know, there's a lot of romanticism around farming, um, some of which is true and many of which is not true. Yeah. And so in my blog for years, you know, I have talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's, you know, don't try to sugarcoat it. Um, 
but you know, farming is a lifestyle and a way of life and you know it works for me but um, what farm camp does is it just gives folks um, we start like I said it goes nine to one yeah. um, off of Monday through Friday um, we start with the animals so the donkeys the ducks the chickens um, just to kind of what are their needs for the day um, and then we move to the vegetable fields and it's really what do we do? It can be any one of a million different things that I do. Yeah, you know, in depends. A day. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, you know, today it would have been, you know, doing strawberry plants and harvesting kale and lettuce and um, planting a row of okra. And what else did I do? This one, uh, doing some sweet potato transplants. And I don't know. I mean, yeah. that was before you, 11. You're, you know, making, me, you're making me hungry. So, I should have yeah. eaten lunch before I came. <laughs> Definitely you should have. But the um, farm camp is is primarily for children? Well, it's, or, if, it's, if it's children only, there needs to be an adult on the property the full time. The whole time. Yep. Um, so the idea behind it, I have a tiny house at my farm um, that is... Um, for people that want to do farm camp and stay at the farm. I was just saying, yeah. So, so that's available for that. And that's on air? On Airbnb. B&B, yeah. Um, but also, you know, I'm starting to do more just day farm campers. Yeah. You know, homeschoolers that would come. Um, or, you know, maybe even if you have a child that's really interested in, you know, the garden, it might be a good, you know, mother-daughter, father-son, father-daughter you know, yeah. outing, um, get them outside, get them, you know, do, like I said, show, show them how food magically shows up, right, at the right. grocery or on the table. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago that they interviewed kids and they asked them where milk came from and they would say the grocery store. Now they interview kids and ask them where the milk came from and they say a waiter. Mm. That needs to change. Yeah, yeah. That needs to change. Yeah, we were talking about one of my fondest memories as a child was working in our family garden. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, literally pulling something off the vine from the earth, stuck, you know, corn, shucking it, you know, and then giving it to mom and let mom cook it and then yeah. eating it. Sure, <laughs> Which sure. not only from a taste standpoint is good, but the larger lesson you know, is the investment in and what it requires from an effort standpoint sure. to produce. Well, and it's very empowering too. You know, to think that you can plant a little seed and, yeah. you know, four months later you can have an okra plant that's, you know, taller than your head. Yeah. And, you know, it's people that, when I'm here every day, I don't necessarily see, you know, the changes like the potatoes, but um, I had some uh, family that came and stayed at the farm camp and helped me plant the potato row. Um, gosh, it was maybe six weeks ago, and she sent me a text, you know, send me some pictures of the potatoes, and so I showed her, now granted, you know, in the six weeks since they've been here, they've been weeded, they've been hilled, they've been mulched, they've been fertilized with a, I'm trying something new this year, using molasses, um, the organic and, stuff. yeah, and, and so I sent, she's like, oh my gosh, they're huge, you know, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but, you know, to me, I was like, gosh, I don't feel like they've grown that much. But, yeah. you know, somebody that, it's just like when you see, a, you know, if you see your child every day or if it's your niece and you see her every two months, you see the changes so much yeah. more differently. So it's the same with this. No, but um, one of my favorite quotes I love is, you know, watching something grow is good for morale because it helps you believe in life. And, you know, yeah. I feel so fortunate to be here doing this work and be surrounded by life affirming, abundance, beauty, you know, just yeah. lots of just wonderful things. And, you know, we all need this right now in yeah. life. You know, there's so much ah, out there that to be around positive nurturing, I think, is a true gift. Yeah, well, and I think um, to some degree, that's kind of the magic of, of Raven County is, sure. yes, we have, you know, pick Clayton because it's the most conspicuous example. But yeah, we have these farm to table restaurants, sure. but we have farms where you can actually see it from inception and what it takes again to get to that point. And hopefully we have people that either live or visit 
they kind of have that appreciation mm -hmm. um, for nature and it's kind of a good mix of nature and mm -hmm. commerce, mm -hmm. if you will, because sure, farming sure. is a business too. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was, it was you know, two generations ago that, um, you know, our food in this country was grown by 50% of the population. Today, that number is less than 2%. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, very few people even know a farmer. Yet, we depend on a farmer three meals a day. Yeah, yeah. And that's a huge disconnect that um, I think is starting to change. Yeah. And I think um, COVID is propelling that change to even faster, that people are realizing that, wow, I, I need to have a better understanding of not only where my food is coming from and who is growing it, but how to grow it. Yeah. And um, so that's, I guess, part of the motivation too behind the farm camp. I'm not, you know, I don't have any illusions of creating a bunch of farmers from, you know, a nine to one visit at a farm or a farm camp. Um, but yeah, especially with the kids, who knows? You know, they might become nutritionists. They might become a chef. They might become, you know, uh, I mean, who knows? They might become a farmer. Who knows? Yeah, that that yeah. memory of, you know, the. I had one little boy that came on a farm tour a few years ago, and he was maybe 10, and at the end of the farm tour, you know, I asked people, you know, what, you know, what did you think, or what did you enjoy? And this little boy was so enthusiastic, like, that was the best farm tour ever! It was probably the only farm tour he's ever been on, but whatever. <laughs> I was like, well, thank you, and why do you say that? And he goes, because I pulled a carrot out of the ground, and it was purple. And I grow purple carrots. But, you know, the kids love, like, yeah. The striped beets and I so I grow yeah. you know some unusual vegetables things yeah. like kohlrabi that look like little spaceships and you know I grow a lot of basics too but yeah that is what you know and he, that kid I guarantee you will remember that purple carrot the rest of his life yeah absolutely so. well and I think to your point it's about education and kind of understanding uh it's a little bit about hey you know let's have a plan b here and having some life skills some practical life skills yeah, you know sure. we have all these survival shows and that that kind of stuff and and then you know also again just sort of being a well-rounded person having an understanding of, of the difference between a freshly picked organic tomato and maybe something that's not organic and is mass produced and sure. you well, know there's you're so the nutrition there's so much well, more nutrition yeah i was gonna say and that's what you're trying to do with the educational piece absolutely and you know it was funny i had another guest at the um tiny house that did the farm camp and you know on his little airbnb review he's wrote, do your therapist a favor and book a stay at Ladybug Farms. <laughs> because, but to that point, you know, digging in the dirt and just, okay, you might get a little dirty. Yeah. That's what showers are for. That's what the creek is for. You know, it's so grounding. And especially at the end of the day, that's my favorite time to be in the garden, you know, from like seven till nine. And, you know, this time of year, the fireflies are out. Mm -hmm. You know, they're just, they're, and it's just, you hear the birds and it's just so calm and it's so peaceful yeah. and it's just you know i mean that's it's yep you know. we got a little clip uh, a couple of weeks ago because you were doing a harvest so hey welcome to ladybug farms um today we're uh first cutting of the season we usually get two um cuttings and um this is actually the first certified organic hay fields in georgia in 2015 was that first certification so we've got several neighbors here helping uh, with the square bale pickup. DJ Bradshaw, born and raised in Raven County, he cuts the hay and still uses the old time square balers. So we'll run into him in just a second. And um, yeah, these are all neighbors from Persimmon that um, either grew up being around hay pickups or having grandparents at farms. And be loading it up picking up this is the second field we've got a third field to pick up and we're putting it in the barn cool so, pitch it in can you talk just sure yeah so that <laughs> was the hay um twice a year i've got seven acres of certified organic hay production here um a small amount but the idea behind it was one to support the george organics um get more organic farms campaign statewide um but also i knew i had really good clean hay and I was hoping that that hay could spark um, people either getting their 
sheep or goats, small herd ruminants certified because you can't get them certified if there's nothing for them to eat. Right. So that was the idea behind that. Um, so it's a big effort. Uh, my neighbor, DJ Bradshaw, Shadowby Farms, he comes, he's Raven County native. Um, he comes and cuts the hay twice a season. And then um, it's up to me and the crew of neighbors, this time is wonderful, yeah. that uh, we picked up about, this year wasn't as much, 120 square bales. It was cut a month earlier because it was so hot and dry. The hay was ready early this year. Yeah. So pick up those bales. When they get 50 pounds, they get heavy really quick. And they get you know, <laughs> schlepped onto the trailer and stored into the barn. Most of this actually, because I'm so far from, um, if I was closer to Atlanta, there's a big demand for the organic hay down there, but I'm yeah. two plus hours away. So a lot of it is actually gone for mulch for gardens okay. because it's clean. It doesn't have any pesticides on it and people that are, you know, want their gardens to be free. Yeah. Because a lot of people will use um, yeah. chemicals in the hay, but this, this had nothing on it. Um, so yeah, so it was a great, we had, I've never had so many people come as I did this time. And um, we got it done in no time and then sat around and had angel food cake and strawberries from the garden because oh, it's strawberry time, yeah. we missed that. Well, um, I didn't you, deserve you, it because I didn't do any work that well, day. I just pictures, showed up and took some so, yeah. some pictures. So yeah, like the little red hen we were talking yeah, about, okay, I didn't okay. deserve any bread that oh. day. Um, And so for folks that are interested in um, I know you talked about, you know, the, the tiny house in terms of Airbnb, but if they're interested in farm camp and all that sort of stuff, what's the best way to get in contact with um, you? Really just on my website, ladybugfarms.net. Yep. E-T. We'll link it. Um, okay. Um, and which would have my email. Yep. So I admittedly could do a better job at the whole marketing part of all of this. Um, the online presence, I guess is the official term. Yeah. Um, so working on that but um yeah that, this is where i am and yeah. uh, that's how to reach me but also just come talk to me at the farmer's market on saturdays too every yeah. week and um, that's a good place to connect not only with me but the other local growers bakers honey folks, so say, some uh, folks, doing folks. similar things in the community right yeah. yep yeah um, yeah and uh it's it's yeah a nice variety nice diversity yeah. of, of different things and plus it's just a way to get out meet your neighbors meet your sea community absolutely yeah and we're gonna do a future feature on the farmer's market awesome. so well terry thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule absolutely. to to show us around a little bit and talk about your personal story as, as well as that of the, the farm so folks uh, you heard it here, and one of the myths that I like to attack frequently is the notion that there's not uh, interesting and engaging things for children to do mm -hmm. uh, in Raven County. That's certainly not true mm -hmm. in the case of Terry and what she's doing out here at Ladybug Farms um, and a lot of the things that we've talked about. But really, families can enjoy this as well. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing for mom and dad to get in on the, uh, the action as well, so to speak, and uh, uh, again, pull some purple carrots on the <laughs> yeah. ground, right? Because you'll remember that um, as well. Or just come to the farmer's market if you want to go the easy route for starters and talk to Terry about the cool things you're doing. And look at this. The sunshine has, know, has returned. This so, is Raven County. If you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes. It'll change. It'll change for uh, you. So will you help me say goodbye? Or as I like to say, <laughs> we'll see you next time, Raven Alrighty. County. Thanks for visiting. <laughs>